Welcome back, everybody, to We Are TPM with myself, Kyle Teixeira, sitting next to, again, John Teixeira. And this week we have a welcomed guest, Landon Day, with Daydream Photography. Thanks for coming in, Landon. Uh, This week we're going to talk about the importance of professional photography in your listings and your rentals and really just general importance of professional photography. So if you have any interest in getting professional photography, anything we talk about today, give us a call, 817-818-9039. Shoot us an email at showmethemoney at wertpm.com. I've done that before. A couple times. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into it. Why is professional photography important? No, let's first talk about why Landon's here to talk about that, because that's even more important. So Landon and I have been working, you've been doing my photography for all of our listings I have no idea how long. I'm going to say at least 12, 13, 14 least. years, something like that. As long as um, I've been in Texas. You and I have known <laughs> each other for a long time. <laughs> and one of the things I know about you is that you also are considered one of the cream of the crop in your industry nationwide, right? I mean, like you go around the country and teach other people that do what you do how to do it better. Am I wrong about that? No, nope, you're not. Talk, I, talk about that because I know you won't. You won't talk about yourself in that way. If so I don't make you okay, 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 okay. So I've actually taught literally all over the country, California to Florida, even Canada, uh, lots of places in between. It's been a minute since I've done a lot of that. Um, even pre-COVID, I had kind of pulled back from actually doing the travel part of it. Um, some of that was because we actually have a team now here that I spend a little more time hands-on dedicated to teaching and training them how to do what I do. Um, but for the most part, um, you're, you're not wrong. So we've won um, international awards. We've won the best of stuff for local. Um, since 2016, we've won every year. Um, something we're real proud of. I was just telling the rest of my team, uh, when that started, when we won that first award, uh, it was just me. And now it's a team mm-hmm. of... 11 of us and growing um wow. so it's very very much a team uh, award at this point our team now covers from locally from corsicana uh, to keller's where they actually home base out of so beyond that to frisco now um a lot of people don't know we just had a frisco and i'm actually leaving on sunday to go train a new photographer who's joining us in lubbock wow so this will be our first one that's actually not in our immediate dfw area wow I, I don't okay. know. Go ahead, Kyle. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I don't know of, I've been in the industry a long time and I know a lot of my colleagues, we talk about things like photography, right? And and all the things that, that go into what we do. And I don't know of another photographer in our market, the D- Dallas-Fort Worth market, that has as big a name and as big a following as you do. Um, I, I, there are other companies that are kind of like franchise companies uh-huh. that, that people use. And I feel like everybody I talk to either <clears throat> uses one of those companies or you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting because when I started doing the real estate side of things um, – it was an accident. Like I wasn't seeking out doing real estate photography. My background is in studio and portrait work and uh, commercial work. So when the real estate opportunity became available, I didn't even know what I was doing. Um, if you ask me, hey, I need a senior photographer, a wedding photographer, a baby photographer, I can give you 30 off the top of my head and not even have to think about mm-hmm. it. But if you were to ask me, like you said, for another photographer who does real estate photography, um, I know one locally and i know one in austin Mm -hmm. by name and other than that it's names Mm -hmm. of companies that franchise out so so you're you're not wrong it's it's an interesting dynamic in the way that that has come about like i like i said i can list i can list 20 portrait photographers in mansfield Mm -hmm. i don't know really anybody else is doing real estate we're good at what you do you've made a name for yourself and we're super um appreciative of the fact that you came in here to talk about uh, an important topic right kyle yeah, that's why it's, it became such a great business and you're able to grow it, right? It's because it's important and it shows value to your customers. And I imagine your customers are real estate professionals, people like that. Yeah, so it, it's it's interesting because as this has grown, um, realtors talk. Like mm-hmm. there's no secret to that, right? So like all of this has grown completely with word of mouth. And when you have a network of professionals, a lot of the, let's say the cream of the crop, they all have all been in business for a while. They all know each other. They all have those relationships with one another. Uh, relationships are worth their weight in gold. 
So you keep one of them happy, they tell you tell somebody about you, and then you piss one of them off, and they also tell someone <laughs> about you. So uh, it's better to stay on the front end of that, and that's just the way our business has grown is just straight up word of mouth and referral since since its beginning. That's um, just true for our current economy, isn't it? And, we kind and of everything. have a, a results economy. Some people call it a uh, – what do you call it, Kyle? A, a review economy. I mean, that's just kind of Performance. The, the way things have changed, right? Yeah, you look at – I mean – specifically where we're at right now like if you look at like an airbnb review like one bad review mm -hmm. can shoot you in the foot for a while so mm -hmm. it's it's so much on that word of mouth and it can be something completely ridiculous if they don't even know what's going on but it doesn't even matter one bad review can can take yep, you for absolutely. a while well and you're part of that importance you're part of that competitive action right so if two realtors have two listings in the same neighborhood at the same price and mm -hmm. mine sells and theirs doesn't they ask why or why how'd you get people in here and we say land and day or <laughs> that's that's the difference right so you know you know what's funny about that is that that we you and i talk about this a lot kyle about how we go through listings and you know i'm always sh rolling my eyes at at what realtors and and other people do professionals you know, you're going through a group of listings and one or two will pop out at you. And I think we're going to talk about this, right? And and you could tell that there's professional photography involved there. But I've been doing this so long with Landon that I can literally go through a group of listings and tell you, okay, that's professional photography that Landon did. And that's somebody else's <laughs> professional photography. And there's the iPhone. So just this last week, it came up. I know, I didn't know I knew the seller. But I had multiple agents reach out to me after they went on their you know, sales pitch to them. And at the end of it, the, whoever was interviewed last, I don't remember who it was, they said, now, are you going to use Landon for your photos too? <laughs> They're like, yeah, how did you know? Like, well, everybody else has come in here already has said that they were going to use Landon for the photos. So I was like, I don't know if that means it's a plus at that point if everybody's using you, but it's also definitely a negative on the yep. flip side if, if you're not. If you're not. Yep. <laughs> yep. I love it. Who do you, yeah, they ask, who do you use for photos? Yeah. And they're like, well, we don't really have that answer. Okay, I'm not picking you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be all the top guys are using Landon. So. <laughs> all right, so we got the right guy in here. Why do we, if I've got, well, I got to, uh, before we get into this, how many? I'm a. We're a property manager. You do all of our listings, all of our little rentals, from eight hundred and fifty dollar a month rentals to four thousand dollar a month rentals. We have you out for every single one of them. Mm -hmm. How many property managers do you have like us that are doing that? Ooh, um, that's just an interesting question. I'm curious about. I don't. Y'all are probably the only property manager. On, on that note, we have some one-offs, um, mm -hmm. but definitely on that kind of a volume, um, we may have somebody who's managing something for a friend or something. We've we've had one or two others over the years, but um, y'all are really the only one that, that does what you do that we work with. Well, let's get into why. Why do we do that? Why do why 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 is real estate prof photography, professional real estate photography, so important? So my job can be construed a couple different ways. But my only job is to get somebody into that property mm -hmm. or to get somebody to look at that property. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we get some feedback of like, hey, you can't smell the photo, but it looks really great. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're not wrong. And some of these <laughs> things that we walk into, right? Um, and some of them are like, man, it looks so much better in the photos. And I'm like, okay, I mean. <laughs> then I did my job. Then I did I my job. Like my, my job is to get somebody to come and look at the property. And then mm -hmm. at that point, they can make up their own decision. Um, but getting somebody in the door and when somebody's looking, we're, we're not in a 2020 market right now where there's, you know, five houses mm -hmm. on the market. Yeah. Um, it, there's a few more houses on the market. And if somebody's scrolling through and there's a hundred things that are popping up and five of them jump at you, Odds are those five have professional photos, and we could dive into some other things that are going to jump out at you too. But uh, at a quick glance, if somebody's scrolling, you know, Zillow or Realtor.com or whatever, those that jump and pop at you are going to have, you know, the right color, the right pop of the sky, the the right angle is mm -hmm. going to be not something that was just taken with the phone as good as your cell phone is, and I. It's amazing what it can do. It's not going to be able to do and stand out like what we can do. Well, and, and that's that's a huge part of the importance, right, is your job is to get people in the door. And statistically, the more people you get in the door, the more options you'll have for offers and, sure. and all that. Um, but oh. not just statistically, like you said, on Zillow and 
all these other places, these websites will you will benefit on these websites. It's something very underappreciated uh, if you have professional photography. Like Zillow, if you're not searching specifically, is going to show you the listings that people click the most, right? So, and I've actually got some stats specific to Zillow, actually. Okay. So we are a Zillow preferred photographer. Mm -hmm. um, so that alone, in the large scheme of things, Zillow reached out to us directly and said, hey, in the beginning... Any photo that y'all take, any property that y'all take is automatically going to get preferred placement on our website. Mm. So when I was having this conversation with them, I was like, hey, I appreciate that. That's an honor. But why? And they said, well, we want that landing page on our website to look good. We don't want, you know, some dark exposed, you know, photo of a bathroom with a toilet seat up as the front photo. We right. want our landing page of these websites to look professional and good. So we want you, oh. your photos to be at the top of everything. And then as there have been other companies that have been doing more photography, then they've come back and said, Hey, you're still going to get preferred placement. And even more so if you do a 3d tour and even more so if you do a floor plan, some of these things that they're just trying to drive more and more traffic to their site from, and just that media that is proven very beneficial. Um, but, selfishly they want to look professional yeah. and they want the listings that are going to pop and stand out to look good and if you're the realtor that's using that type of you know marketing strategy well you're going to get preferred placement on those websites well, it sounds mutually beneficial to all three parties i mean you, you, everybody wins in that yeah you can market that we get placement for it and they get placement for it so i mean it's just like a, a google search like you're not going to go past first page almost ever, you're never going past the second page. Mm -hmm. Same way when you're looking at houses, if you're just looking at a generic demographic, then you know, you're going to scroll the first 10 on the welcome page and, and move on. And if you're not looking for a specific neighborhood or s specific brackets or something like that. And you may not get to those iPhone photo listings because there's so many of them that have professional photography if they're at the top of the list. Or even if you do, by the time you get there, there's already an emotional response that, that has happened from looking at all the listings that had your photos, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, like, if I'm looking at, I don't know, I hate even, well, if I'm looking at Zillow, then, you know, I've already determined that this is a quality place for me to go because I've gone through eight listings and... And every single one of them had Landon's photos or, or professional photography. And by the time I got to the iPhone photos, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm almost dismissing that listing almost immediately. Well, I, I, I heard you kind of wince when you said Zillow. And, like, I, I, I do fully understand. Real estate professionals always wince when I, we say Zillow. I, I know. I know. And then <laughs> I had to put on, like, my, my professional hat yep. and then my consumer hat because on a consumer side of mm -hmm. things, like, it is it's it, it's, it it's is awesome the Amazon site. of of real estate from a consumer of trying to find mm -hmm. out what they're interested in doing. So love it or hate it, like it's part of the beast that you yep. have to negotiate. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, we definitely recognize that. We we, <laughs> we we definitely recognize that it's a beast that you gotta do business with. So well, and it add the, the another piece of importance is the value is psycho psychological value that it adds, right? You could see even if you're on the MLS, even if we're not using the fluff of what Zillow does and it's not being sorted this way, um, they these consumers can see these houses with, say, phone photos and these houses with professional photography, and it could be the difference between, oh, okay, I can, I can get a discount on this deal, or they see the professional photography and they're like, all right, I got to put a good offer in on this deal. You know, yeah. stuff like that can, can actually play a factor. So let's even flip it around for a, a real estate professional side of things. Mm-hmm. These consumers are looking at Zillow and they're looking at their next house already. And then they're going to look at how you're going to market and sell their house. So they're educated in that way. Mm -hmm. And if you say, you know, I'm going to come in and take photos with my phone, this will work fine. And you're the first person they interview mm -hmm. and the next person says, hey, I'm going to come in and do professional photos. Okay. And the next person says, I'm going to do professional photos and a 3D tour and drone photos and Twilight or whatever, like, they don't care. They're not paying any more for it, but that's just more added benefit of you to be able to sell yourself to that homeowner at that point. And you know what? It's so easy to do. Like I don't, I don't, I don't really understand the real estate professional that 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 doesn't take the time and bear the expense to do it because it's almost like a slam dunk. Like you're you are doing your client a disservice if you're not doing this. In my opinion, that's that's how I feel as both a consumer 
and as a real estate professional as I'm going through listings. And to your point, before you ever get to the kitchen table, that consumer, consumer, that that person that you're sitting with that is asking you to sell your home is already so more educated, so far beyond um, what what past clients were, right, mm-hmm. in, in their level of education. They've already done it. They've already gone through. They've already surfed. They know every home within a mile radius of their home that's on the market. They know what they're up against. And before you sit there, you better also know and be prepared to, to compete, right? Um, it, it just amazes me that people don't put in like what landon how hard is it to schedule with you i mean it, it, it's like ordering it's, a pizza it's on a website even, it's not even that expensive <laughs> it's it's not that hard to do it's like you said we do it on a website and if i'm in a crunch and i really need something sometimes i i call you but we've got a number for, it's all good yeah it's 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 extremely easy and i don't and our turnaround time is the next yeah. morning so it's not like a long time i was talking to um uh the person who we're going to be up working with in Lubbock. And she said right now, the issue is, is there's only a couple people doing photography. They're about five to seven days away from being able to get in. And then their turnaround time is another five to seven days. So the time they sign a listing and schedule photography, they're two weeks out. Well, that's not going to cut it. (laughs) You know, by the time somebody is ready to sell their house and they want the photos done, like we're talking Mm-hmm. You know, 48 hours, it needs to be live. Otherwise, the almost that moment's gone. You got to catch it all while everything's still hot and exciting. And you're, and essentially in that timeline, they're probably using phone photos in the most important time of the listing. Yeah, that initial, that, that initial, initial pop. Yeah, that initial 10 days when it's live is with without the professional photography. Mm-hmm. So it just devalues as a whole. So. Yeah. You know, it's one thing if you've got like a, a pocket listing and you're not broadcasting it out and you're putting some feelers out like, okay. But if it's something that you're just going to throw out to the general population, then you got to put your best foot up front. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's why we, we a lot of times get your photography, regardless of whether these rentals are rented already or not, you mm-hmm. know, just so that we have them for the next time. Sure. So. Hey, before we before we wrap this up, because I feel like we're probably we're probably killed this conversation, but but there's more that goes into going and shooting, like taking it, having a great camera and going and putting it on a tripod and putting it in the right places. And all those things are important. Having the right equipment, knowing how to use the equipment. Right. Mm-hmm. But one of the things people don't realize that that we've learned the hard way from having both you and having bad photographers that that are also professional photographers is the 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 post production or editing of those photos before they come to us mm-hmm. is extremely important. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Especially if you've got a a, a house that's got you know eighteen different colors of light bulbs through the house, and half of them the blinds don't open right, or you can't get a ceiling fan to stop. Like these are all or or it's raining. Um, these are all challenges that we face, you know, all the time. Evidently, it hasn't rained here in like three weeks, so my yard's <laughs> telling me that. Um, but, but I mean, even even in the spring and our rainy season, it doesn't matter when we know that people are on a time crunch. So we're going to shoot it in the rain. We're going to have a bright blue sky. And nobody's even going to know mm-hmm. when, when it's all said and done. Or we go into a house that doesn't even have electricity on. We can make it bright, airy, soft, I've and seen it and look great. Um, the light bulb one is a little trickier, but we can even do that. Views out windows is a, is a one that took us a long time to really get a grasp on. And sometimes the view is completely irrelevant. Like we don't need to see the neighbor's house. I get mm-hmm. that. But if there's a pool in the backyard, or you back up to the golf course or, mm-hmm. you know, something like that that we want to emphasize, well, you need to be able to see out those windows and not just be completely blown out white. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot on that back end of things. Um, if a white baseboard is white in real life, it, you get all your photos back and it's, yellow or mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. whatever color it may shift to through that process it's, it's good to have um that post-production side of things um because of that we've actually started working with uh, we have on our team now an, an editor an editor mm-hmm. and they do all of our edits so everything's running through one person mm-hmm. so instead of me editing one way and Catherine editing one way and macy editing one mm-hmm. way and everybody's got a little bit different of a mm-hmm. style and look now we've even tried to standardize that across the board. Mm-hmm. So anybody on our team, everybody's going to have their own eyes and everything's going to be a little bit different because of that. Like there's no there's no denying that. But as far as the way the final product looks, it should be super consistent across 
no matter who on our team is doing it. And that is a, a really, really big deal. Yeah. Even as simple as like taking a pull pump out of a pool or, mm-hmm. you know, some, something as simple as that is, is important. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, you, you know, cause people probably think this, you don't Photoshop structural edits. I, I, I was about to just say that. Like there, we, we will Photoshop things that are not permanent to the house, mm-hmm. um, like a pull pump. We are not going to take the water tower out of the background, the mm-hmm. power lines out of the background, mm-hmm. the um, electric box in the front yard. Like, we are not going to touch that. And if you ask us to, we're just going to kind of shrug our shoulders and not do it. Like, and that Things being that said, are changeable. That, that being said, we may use a creative camera angle to minimize what that stuff looks like, <laughs> you know, but we are not going to go through and literally Photoshop something out to do that. Well, and the whole point is, I think I think the answer to the question is why is it so important is because if you take the whole process backwards, you're trying to sell or rent a home, right? And that takes getting uh, an offer or an application, right? Which takes somebody to go through that home, which takes somebody to want to go through that home because they saw it online because i don't care people like to say they like to say 92 percent of people start online i don't care if you're 85 years old 100 percent of people in 2023 start online like nobody gets in their car drives down the street is there did you you know i've actually got a stat on that do you have one person yet no. So e- even in the age demographic of 77 to 97 years old, yeah, 60% of them said the most important thing was photography. Okay. So, and they're not seeing this on an MLS sheet that you're printing out. Like, right. so 60% of people are saying the most important thing at 97 years old. Well, because they probably can't see very well. <laughs> so they need the high resolution. You know. <laughs> That's right. It's very important to them. I, hey, hey, I, 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 can, I can attest to that. I can feel for that. <laughs> But I mean, even so to your point is even, even that demographic, the people think, well, they're the only ones that are going to get up and do it the old fashioned way. No, we've been doing this for so long now that even they are now accustomed to the way we shop, the way we consume even houses. There's no reason for anybody to get in their car, drive around looking for houses to frustrate themselves at this stage. I mean, nobody's doing it, right? No, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to narrow down a, a neighborhood or a region, and I'm going to search out that area, and I'm going to tell my agent that this is where I want to go look at properties at. Like, So they used to say first impression was at the door, right, at the curb, right? Curb appeal was the most important thing, and it still is important that you have that curb appeal in the photos, but the step before that now – in 2023 is that photography, right? The, the first impression is the picture that you present online. So it, yes, there, there, there's an interesting thing I want to hit on, like in, in 2020, COVID time, like real estate was, was crazy, right? There, there was no denying that. And really at that point, there was a shortage of houses. There was people trying to move everywhere. And at that moment, you could put whatever you wanted to yep. online and that house was going to sell. Yep. The, it's just the way it was. However, there were also a zillion agents trying to get five listings. So the flip side of when photography became important was, like I said earlier, if, if realtor one is not going to use photography, they're like it's going to sell with an iPhone anyways. Well, as a homeowner, I don't want to be embarrassed to put my house out there mm-hmm. to the market, you know, looking like crap. So it was as important as getting the listing then uh, as it was as selling the listing. And now we're kind of shifting back into that time where the rules, the photography is important to actually sell the house. But so it was a way of sifting through the agents too. Is what it, it is. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and, but I would also contend it's a numbers game, right? So like even that person that could have sold with iPhone photos, maybe they got 10 offers, mm-hmm. right? And maybe they sold $40,000 over asking, right? That was kind of a real thing, wasn't it? <laughs> But what if they got professional photography and they got 25 offers and sold for $65,000 or $70,000 over asking? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a realistic scenario. So even in that scenario where where anybody can put a sign in their front yard that says for rent and rent a house, they don't even need photos. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. You don't even need photos. You put a, I could put a for rent sign in front of your house and put his number on it and he'll get a ton of calls. Well, yeah, it's my house. 
<laughs> well, okay. But in your example, Landon's photos cost that twenty thousand dollar difference, right? That's that's about what you charge for these photos. Yeah, exactly. 20, 000, yeah, no, photos? nothing yeah. like that. Not exactly. even one percent of that. <laughs> no. Not even. So, um, so to my point is, I don't need your photos to rent my houses as a property manager. Absolutely, don't need them. Mm-hmm. I really don't need any photos, and I've proven that because sometimes. We rent things before we get you out for whatever reason, because we're still working on it, whatever. And I've just got a listing with some general information and it rents, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But if I have your photos, I'm going to have so many more applicants to choose from. And I would rather sift through 25 applicants and choose the best one than sift through four. Sure. That's our, that's the point. It doesn't matter whether I need it or not. The point is it will make the end result so much better no matter what in any market, whether it's a COVID market or if it's a normal market. It doesn't matter. Right now what we're seeing is is during that COVID market, everybody became a realtor because mm-hmm. you could sell your friend's house, your mom's house in, mm-hmm. in a weekend, and it was easy at that moment. Mm-hmm. And now – and before that – you know, going back to even like 2007, 8, 9, 10, when things were really slow and things were sitting on the market forever, the agents that had best practices and policies and procedures in place were the agents that survived. Mm-hmm. And they also were the agents that killed it through COVID. And they're the agents that are still here mm-hmm. in 2023. Mm-hmm. The agents that came who didn't use those best practices, didn't use things like professional photography, didn't use things potentially like a, a stager or a cleaner crew or those kind of things to be sure that everything was best foot forward, those people sold their mom's house in 2020, and now they're not doing real estate anymore in 2023 because mm-hmm. they didn't understand. They don't even know what, how. They don't even know how. They don't yeah. know what went into it. But the agents that were doing things right then, even when maybe you didn't have to, uh, are the ones that are still right now that are killing it. Yeah. I mean, it's these markets can become easier and harder, but you want to make sure to hire people that can work through all yeah. of them. So, and, and right now, if it's harder and... You know, instead of having, let's say, a thousand agents and there's 500 agents, but these are 500 great agents, like, really, that's better for everybody involved. Better Mm -hmm. for the consumer, too. Yeah. We talk a lot on this podcast about short term rentals, Airbnbs, stuff like that. Um, So, I want to at least. Good segue. Segue into the. (laughs) Into that point because there is no, no, no avenue of this business that we do that is that f- professional photography is more important than on short-term rentals and airbnb absolutely because getting people in the door is getting them preserved right there is no they see the photos and they come check it out and they decide whether they want to pick that one and then do it on the next one right yeah. that, that whole sales pitch is being done on airbnb on vrbo or wherever you're at mm-hmm. um it's and not just that it it's just like the Zillow aspect, the placement. You get placement on Airbnb and these apps based on what they see as professional photography. They go even more in depth into your photos. They've spent hundreds of millions of dollars at this point in reading photos, comparing that to text, and you know, giving away some secrets here. But that professional photography could not be more important to the listing. So something you know, because you've taken professional photo- I, photography for our Airbnbs. I can't wait to hear, hear Landon's perspective on, on short-term rentals, but I got to add to that because that was a really good segue. I want to add to that, that, that the markets are so saturated right now. How do you, how do you as a, as a listing, a short-term rental listing in almost any market, um, how do you set yourself aside and make your, sure that you're, at the top of the list and you're the one that's seen and, and getting booked when it seems like everybody's opening up a short term rental nowadays, doesn't it, Landon? I mean like I mean quite literally because I did too. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you were smart enough to have to have us manage it for yeah, you. Yeah, so yeah. so but but so talk about that. What do you do differently as a photographer? Because this is kind of like the same all the same same principles, right? Come yeah. into play here. But it seems like to Kyle's point it's even more critical in in that in that space. Yeah, so in that space in particular, and actually Kyle was the first one to kind of lean in on me, and, and we kind of learned a little bit of this together, was uh, they're a little bit more like um, HGTV-driven or mm-hmm. Architectural Digest style. Like, it's not mm-hmm. necessarily about how big can I make this living room look right. or... Um, 
We talked about the emotional response that you get. It's it, even more important with it, that, it isn't is. it? It is. It, it's about building a brand for these guys. Like our, our cabin's called Get Toasted. It's mm-hmm. in Broken Bow. And in the photos, like the brand Get Toasted is all through the photos. Mm-hmm. And it's a look and a feel and a style. And it's super consistent through the whole property of, you know, this warm, inviting, clean, earthy tone, mm-hmm. you know, cabin. But it's then it's a oh here's a detail shot of a cool pillow with leather mm-hmm. and tassels that That's I'm right. sure my wife thought was cute or you know something <laughs> like that and I'm like oh but look at this whiskey barrel end table over here that I got <laughs> like you yeah. know it's but tying that all in together and making that that brand of the emotional response of what can my kids do when they come to this oh there's a dart game in the bedroom. Oh, there's a Nintendo switch hanging on the wall or, Oh, there's a hot tub or a slide off the deck. You know, all these kinds of things are going to get those triggers of, of that response where I can go through and take beautiful photo of a house, but half of that goal is showing the space in general, because you're not selling the furniture, you know, you're not selling the decor of the house. You're, you're selling the floor plan of that property versus like a short term rental. You're, you're selling, the vibe, the mood, the location, what am I going to do while I'm there? That's yeah. different than going to a hotel, uh, that kind of a feel. And you're, you're selling the exp- – one of the things you've done very well, especially at your cabin and, and all of our Airbnbs, but you're selling an experience and a perspective at the same time. So like like in Broken Bow, everybody's got a hot tub, right? Yep. So you want to obviously show the hot tub, but what's the experience in the hot tub? Or what's the angle for you watching TV going to look like? What's it going to look like behind you? Is there is there another cabin staring you in the face when I turn around? You know, showing those those perspectives mm-hmm. is what makes it a little bit different too. The, what's important to people? Yeah, and, and just those general amenities, like from the photos of our cabin in particular, like from the photo of the hot tub, you see it open with the TV in the fireplace mm-hmm. to the left and you see the fire pit to the right and cornhole boards off in the distance or something like so from one photo you're getting, Oh, there's an outdoor seating here. There's an outdoor fireplace. There's a fire pit out here to make s'mores on. Like one photo is telling a story of what you and your family can be doing, you know, that evening when everybody's chilling at the cabin. That's exactly right. So with regular real estate, we're selling lifestyle. With these, we're selling a guest experience, mm-hmm. right? That's that's shorter. That's five days. And I've got if I've got a hundred cabins up in Broken Bow to choose from, and you do, yeah. <laughs> and, and then you then I, I really want to make a great choice. If I'm going to spend, you know, whatever it is, you know, hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars, mm-hmm. depending on the length of your stay and when you're staying there, you know, if I'm going to spend that hard earned money, and I've got that many choices. I'm really absorbing my my guest experience through these photos yeah. and making a decision that way based on on reviews, photos, descriptions, all of it, right? It's all important. Kyle, it makes me think how important is it at um at a building like uh, one of our we've got our summer house building in in Alabama in Orange Beach, Alabama. And it's really funny, Kyle, that the I mean you can you can testify to this. You've got a building with with 186 units that are all exactly the same layout, mm-hmm. right? Like everybody's got roughly the same view. Some are higher, some are lower, but everyone's got the same view, the same beach, same amenities, same layout. But well, yet all of them get completely different results, partly due to the amenities and the photography. Well, it's important because of placement, right? I mean, that's really all you can do when it's all the same things. Um and knowing what your sites do and all that stuff. So photography is the biggest way that I use to be successful in placement because there's back-end things you can know. Like I can look up the statistics of all of those 600 units. What's the most common thing people are looking for? If it's the pool, the balcony, balcony furniture, um, and Mm. and counters, then my first five photos are going to involve those things. And Airbnb is going to check that my mm-hmm. first five photos and in, include those things. So they're going to place me higher. Mm-hmm. Um, just bec- So the decision of where you put these photos is so important on all these listings, but especially the, on the secondary rentals. bathroom isn't as important as the view off the balcony no. th- where you see the beach. Like I- Exactly. And you may get there, but that's not what people are searching, right? Mm-hmm. That's not what, you know, they're typing into the search bar. Cause these you're, you're really, I say SEO, but you're, you're, executing in a search engine right Mm -hmm. you're putting a using photography to show up higher in a search engine so 
um, you want to be able to show what people are looking for because if they can type in what they look, they're looking for, their eyes will then see, seek out what they're looking for. And if you're not showing that front up and forward, then they're skipping you, yep. you know, cause like, like we've said, there's a lot of options, um, in Broken Bow, there's a ton of options in Orange Beach is a ton of options. So, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's all about making yourself important, right. With photography. So. Yep. And understanding the guest experience and understanding what they need and what they need to see, right? It's different for regular real estate. You mentioned the second bathroom. I'm sitting here thinking about how um, I only have so many spaces to put photos in and and usually you send me way more than I have, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's so that, you know, you're giving me everything I need so I can market in other places. But one of the first things that goes when I have to get rid of a photo, a photo is the laundry room. Sure. Right? Like, Unless it's spectacular. A laundry room is a laundry yeah. room. And the most of the, the photo usually encompasses a washer and dryer mostly, right? It, the laundry rooms are just too small for you to get a camera in there to really show what the laundry room is like, right? So usually you got a photo that's two-thirds washer and dryer with a shelf above it or something. Yep, Am I wrong? garage door. Now, you're never going to use that in regular real estate photography. I say never. You're, you're usually not going to use that. But but I'm thinking about like our, our beach condos. Our Airbnbs. Yeah. Gosh, they're extremely important. People are wondering, well, I'm going to be there for seven days. How much clothes do I have to bring? Oh, look, this, this one has laundry. Where's the laundry at? Am I going to wake up mom and dad when they, you know what I mean? Like all of that is super uh-huh. important. And we're putting that, not front and center, but we're definitely making that a pivotal part of our listing. Or it might not be on a, on a real estate transaction. Exactly. You, get, you just got to understand what... Well, the garage is an even bigger point. You probably, you actually won't even take a photo of the garage unless I ask you to. Mm-hmm. And I'm only going to ask you to in an Airbnb shoot um, if I'm allowing use of the garage, right? Because it yeah. matters to them. Um, no, we, we use the example, like just every house has a laundry room, unless you're in downtown Fort Worth and a house was built in the twenties and you're like, Hey, where did they retrofit that laundry? Because it wasn't originally mm-hmm. built with the laundry. And then you try to show, Oh, they added it in this, you know, garage space or they converted a cabinet in the kitchen. And, and then it's got a different level of importance. Right. Mm-hmm. But any house since the sixties, probably <laughs> like, I, I can't imagine them building, you know, ever now without a laundry room. Like it's just assumed it's there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And they want to see it's whether assumed it's assumed, you know what it looks like. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays they make them, you know, off of the master closet and they make really cool laundry rooms mm-hmm. that, that probably are worth putting in your professional photography. But again, that goes back to understanding your audience, understanding your amenities. Why are you presenting this and why or, and or if not? It's like a, it. If it's like a double stack, you know, you want to know that, mm-hmm. you know, because then you can't. Just if that's go, all you got room for, then yeah, I don't want to know. Yeah. Sta- yeah, I don't want that in my <laughs> picture. Yep. yep. may not sell the property, but uh, <laughs> yep. This has been this has been a more lengthy conversation than I thought it would be, Landon. There's a lot more to this, huh? We, we could talk this in circles all we want. <laughs> Do you want to tell us more about your business and and how you got where you are? And I know you already kind of got into that a little bit, but yeah. you want to take this opportunity to tell us about your business and and maybe tell people how how they would get to you if they want real estate photography or any other photography. Yeah. So we are, uh, our studio, we have a physical studio location in downtown Mansfield. Our building was built in 1890. Super cool. It's got real cool rafters, big space. Um, and there's where we office out of, have meetings, et cetera, but we've got a full studio in there where we do anything from commercial product shoots. Um, it's like we just finished a big project for a international coffee maker company. Like it's mm. really cool, uh, to headshots of families and everything in between branding photos, et cetera. And uh, there's actually a couple of people on our team who can do that outside of even just me. Uh, but then real estate wise, like I already said, we're, we're scattered all over DFW. We know everybody hates a travel fee and <laughs> sometimes they're unavoidable, but, uh, we've tried to strategically spread out across uh, the Metroplex to avoid those. It. Uh, one, it helps everybody with travel time anyways, but I can't go to Frisco and drive two hours each way for the same price. I could shoot a job here in Mansfield. Like it's just impossible. Yep. Um, but we've spread out that way and it's, it's been really cool. Um, like I said, right now we've got, <sighs> 11 of us. How bad is that? I don't even know. Well, like, I remember when it was just out. me and now I have to sit here and like <laughs> think about like how that's... many people we have on the team and it just blows my mind when I start thinking back like when you see where you started and where you're at now you, you like have to pinch yourself a step yeah. back like wow this is 
really is the coolest job ever. And I get to do mm-hmm. it every day. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. You, before this, you were, you, you taught high school. Yeah. I taught at Mansfield High. You're a golf high. coach also, right? No, I, no? I played golf through college, played but golf. I was never a, a golf coach. Okay. All right. Well, um, and so you had a career. That was what you set out to do. And at some point you were inspired to, to leave the comforts of having a regular paycheck and doing something that you once was inspired to do to go do your own thing. Yeah. So even in college, it was a, a goal of mine to be able to do photography full time at some point. Um, so even as I was going through opening Best Buys or being a teacher early on, like the goal was always there to be full time, but, but you're not wrong. Like leaving a guaranteed paycheck is very hard to do. Mm-hmm. Even, even as a teacher and teacher salaries are public, like it's no secret. They don't make a ton of money for what they do. Um, even that paycheck was really, you know, something that was hard to walk away from just because it was consistent, dependable. You knew it was coming every month and you could plan accordingly. Being a self-employed business owner is, is a completely can of worms. And, you know, sometimes my boss is a jerk and he makes me work extra time. And sometimes <laughs> he's like, hey, too. go mow the yard in the middle of the day. And I, okay, let's go mow yep. the yard. Like, it's yep. just, uh, it's a whole different world when when it's on your shoulders. Well, I bring it up because I feel like people, uh, Some it's interesting to other people to listen, if they're, if they're still listening to us, that... that the mindset around that, right? Because I think everybody struggles with that, don't you? Like, yeah. don't you think everybody has some kind of dream, some some kind of entrepreneurial dream to go do that? And and it's really hard in the society. It takes a special person to, especially when you're raising kids and yeah. families, to go out and do that and make that. I mean, that's a that's a really hard. It's a tough risk to take. One of the coolest things. And, and the position where I'm at, where I've grown this too, is is me and my family are are doing well. My kids are taken care of. You know, they eat every night. We have a roof over our head, right? But mm-hmm. but now that we've got this team, like it's really cool to sit back and think of, oh, I'm also helping yeah. provide for this yep. person and their family and this person yep. and their family. And it, it's kind of that pinch me moment again mm-hmm. when you sit back and look like, you know, not only has this engulfed into something that provides for me, but it's also providing for everybody else. And and I can't do it without them. Like there's no secret yep. to that. Like we've outgrown yep. that. But um uh, being able to sit back and be like, okay, this is this is bigger than just me now. It's uh, it makes me feel really good. I love it. What 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 flows through your mind when you hear him talk about that, Kyle? As somebody who's always been an entrepreneur and, <laughs> and I mean it it uh, they all hit home, right? They all hit home. But yeah, I mean, that you get you get the benefit of of watching something grow past just your benefit is probably the most interesting thing, no. um, because it's a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. But at the same time, you're like, well, if I didn't make this jump for me, it never would have worked out for everybody else too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that can go a lot of different ways. But I'm sure everybody on on our team would be doing just fine. They would have yeah. found something else to do. Mm-hmm. But it's it's pretty cool because I I do genuinely think that. The people that I get to work with love working together, love working with me, love what we do and be able to have, you know, that outlet where there's a little bit of creativity, a little bit of flexibility, you know, it's just, it's, it's a more well, you get chill some added, atmosphere. Like it's just a fun job. You get some cool little differences to most photographers in your job, right? You get to see into people's lives. You get to see a variety yeah. of houses. I mean, if there's I, no telling what I'm walking into yeah. shoot to shoot. And and to be honest, most people would probably say realtor, some realtor that they know, right? But if somebody asked me who's seen the coolest and biggest variety of houses and everything, I'd be like Landon Day. Oh, definitely he's Landon. seen the crappiest oh, houses you could ever think of. Yeah. And he's walked into these mansions and like these are things that are normally diff- Tw- different. Twenty million dollar mansions to yeah. double wide meth trailers in the woods. Hey, like yeah. everything in between. <laughs> fun fact. I want to share a fun fact with you, but before I do, so so I, I want to just point out also that that photography Beyond, let's say, let's call it wedding photography, right? Beyond that, the kind of photography that you do, it's a hard business to break into and be successful, isn't it? Oh, There's for sure. Very few people that are as successful as you doing so, it. So, so let, let, let's put realtors and photographers kind of in the same conversation here. If, <laughs> if, if somebody posts on Mansfield Talks, <laughs> does anybody know a realtor? And instantly, there's a thousand people tagged. Yep. 
And then they say, does anybody know a photographer? It may not be a thousand people many, tag landing. Well, holy cow. It's amazing. <laughs> and and for, for, for 10 years, I didn't know this page existed. Mm-hmm. Did not even know it was there. And then one day somebody added me to it. I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh my, like I, there's a world here I didn't even know existed yeah. with all these moms talking to each other Mansfield about who they too, recommended. Let me tell you. And then you sit back and you look like all these people are photographers and they're like, I don't want to be cocky or arrogant or conceited, but like, I don't know any of y'all. I don't like, know any of them. Like, <laughs> how, how is this, how is this mm-hmm. working? And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. it's, you know, so-and-so. And there are definitely are great photographers in the area. Like, I don't want to take away from that, but it's just amazing when you sit back and look, you say, how how hard it is to break into the fact I've been doing this since 2004, almost 20 years into doing professional photography when most people, you know, aren't there for a year or two at the most. Well, and you, you do, you've done some things right too, right? To, to, to leave your stamp and make all of us remember you. Um, we just left your, your yearly appreciation party, right? Where yeah, I bi- think every Yeti bi- in my annual. house. He does it biannual. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's, I'm pretty sure I could never forget Landon because my kids will be drinking out of Yetis that have his name on it. Uh, that's right. Because you have 12 I mean, they last them forever. Those will outlast me. So. They, they will outlast. And I, I have one for the last eight years. So it's, uh, You yeah, didn't even it's, have any kids yet. Yeah. I'm working on that. But, um, the fun coffee. I, I drink my coffee every morning out of a Daydream Photography cup. Yeah. So I love it. I go. love it. So fun fact um, that Landon – I don't know if you still do this or not, but I feel like, you know, you, you're more, you know, high level teaching everybody, right? Keeping the team going. So you and I used to play this little game, and I don't know how many people you did this with, so I'm just going to pretend it was you and I's little okay. game. Every time I had a listing, you would be out there, right? This is back before you had a whole team, right? This is back in the early days. And you would do the listing, and you would guess what I was listing it for. Oh, and, yeah. And n- almost every time nail the list price without looking at comps and doing this big analysis and discussing <laughs> with, with clients. And just to your point, he's seen so much. He would he would sit there and shoot, and he's like, okay. And I'm like, all right, Landon, what you got today? And he's like, all right, well, I think. I think this one's going on for 240, and I'm like, man. I think at the time this was like uh, 107. It was yeah. it was that long ago. The, <laughs> the median the median price price point yeah. back then was probably a couple hundred thousand dollars less than it is now. <laughs> but I was always impressed how close you would get without with very with very l- little yeah. knowledge. Now. It's possible. It's harder now. It's possible though that yeah. you were playing me and you were going on Zillow oh, beforehand. No. And, and <laughs> it eventually became the game that I really like doing. That like, oh, it's about this square foot. It's about in this neighborhood. It's about this finish out. Yeah, it's about this, and you get pretty dang close a lot of times. He he did pretty he'd good. Get most of the information we use to do the comps on it. I mean, he'd, he'd get the square footage, come out and shoot it, the rooms, the so. condition, the amenities, everything. He had it all. <laughs> Probably saw it more than we did because he. Edited all the photos. So. <laughs> all right, Landon, how do people get a hold of you if they need you? So our website's going to get you 99% of the information. It's daydreamphotography.com. We even have .net, too, if you want to go that direction. Um, we've got both domains, but like I said, we're down here in downtown Mansfield. Um, all of our phone numbers, contact, email, et cetera, are right there at uh, daydreamphotography.com, and you can find us there. So your Portrait, photography. Real estate, commercial, all of the above. Okay, so your photography makes people after they see it makes them want to daydream. Absolutely, like, is that it? Like, like I see one of your photos, and all of a sudden I just kind of go off into. Well, and and my can, last name is Day, so yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of works. And I, I can attest here that it, we talked all about this real estate photography, but your portrait photography and everything is also actually. Amazing, you know what? So. You you got a point, and and that should not go. That should not be downplayed. Here is. When you're walking into his office and in his studio, the pictures that you've got up there to demonstrate your abilities are mind blowing. Like they're, they're. I don't even. You've explained to me how you've done some of these <laughs> things, and they are, they are next level photography. Like, it's incredible. If you all are running around downtown Mansfield and you want to pop in on him and and see his stuff, it's absolutely amazing. So, so let me let, let me say this real quick before we before we go. So. Anybody can say they're a professional photographer. Like, there's no, you know, degree necessarily that you have to have. You mm-hmm. there All are you have some to have is a camera. Yeah, and there are some amazing photographers that I know that are just. Remember back when you used to have to know how to develop stuff. I, I actually taught that, <laughs> <laughs> but but there are some amazing photographers that are completely self-taught and are doing amazing things and killing it in the business. 
That being said, there's something to be said, like we have me and Catherine are both certified professional photographers on our team. Like we went above and beyond and learned courses on how to do crazy stuff with lighting or how to combat weird situations and, and what these camera settings can actually do if you get basically stuck in a situation that you is difficult. That's not just a normal one. And then I've got my photographic craftsman's degree, which is what I earned for teaching and bettering the industry and traveling when I was doing all that and, and teaching what we do. And then I actually earned my my master's of photography. And a lot of that was based off of print comp and uh, awards that I won for these crazy photography or these crazy mm -hmm. photos that you're talking about. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess all that being said, like I'm not in our team is not just some guy who picked up a camera and thought they could figure this yep. out one day. Yep. Like there's, there was a whole, whole lot of education and, and art form yep. into this of beyond just, I mean, we do have the, the best equipment that money can buy. Mm -hmm. Like our, our equipment is, is second to none. But that's, I could give Kyle that camera right now, and he can't do what what we can no. do. You <laughs> it's know, what? a great combination between entrepreneurship, great photography, and and you just being a little bit of a nerd. Yeah, right? definitely. So, yeah, <laughs> Landon was the first one to implement drone photography into his business. That by far, like he beat everybody probably by a couple years. I think he had like one of the first drones, and he mounted his own camera on it or something. Yeah. And, and we've got some pictures. I've got pictures in my and office. And sucked, but it was there. It I was, got pictures I, in my office from, what was that, 2008? I don't think I've ever seen Landon happier in the last, like, 10, 12 years than the day I saw you opening your, your drone, and you're like, you got something for me to use this on? <laughs> yes, you exactly. Were ready. You are ready to go. It was such a cool... What, during the flood, what was that, 2008? Right 2010? On, on 2010? Pool, 2010 over there. We, went, we went over and we shot... When when the water in Joe Pool Lake came up higher than it had ever been, we're like, this is an opportunity. We need to we need to shoot this, and mm -hmm. and we shot some cool photos of Lake Ridge High School and our and my neighborhood. Where was Lake Ridge the even Lake there then? I mean, that was about that yeah, same time. It, no, like, it was. They had just built Lake Ridge, and okay. I literally printed those and gave them to all the teachers at Lake Ridge High School and all the homeowners that lived along the lake there. Did yeah, you know that? I did. Yeah. I still have those up in my uh in my office and those are those are cool moments but but that goes back to to your creativity and willingness to be you know get ahead of things and your ingenuity they didn't have camera mounted drones when you did that you mounted your own camera if i remember right yeah and i'm sure right. when, <laughs> when they did have camera mounted drones you were probably the first one to buy one of those too probably and then i mean i very vividly remember like 3d tours at the same time like the first time i saw that is like i've got to have that and i said i've got to have that before it becomes second nature mm -hmm. now it's not uncommon but same way with the drone when when we did our first 3d stuff like it was amazing because nobody else did it mm -hmm. it also took so long it was so expensive but it was <laughs> nobody else did it <laughs> it's only the first time i saw a drone crash right <sighs> i've crashed a few <laughs> drones <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's where i nerded out and saw Salt a right drone that like, one. <laughs> what happens to a drone when it get, loses connection right oh Something yes like that. <laughs> yes 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 i actually sank one in the ocean in belize this summer so there's that too while we're while we're having confession time, I hope you so got it on jealous. video. <laughs> I'm jealous you were in Belize. Yeah. I'd like to be able to say I sank a drone in Belize. That means I was there. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we... Uh, I think it, Landon Love Fest might be over. Yep. Yeah. If you want to contact Landon Day by phone, go to his website. <laughs> go to his website. <laughs> uh, give us a call, 817-818-9039. We'd be happy to give you that web address again. Uh, or shoot us an email at show show me the the money money. at wertpm.com. Landon likes that. We will auto-respond with show Daydream me. Photography. We will auto-respond. <laughs> We won't auto respond. We'll actually read it and respond. I'm just kidding. Thanks for coming in, Landon, and talking to us. Guys. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it very Absolutely. much. We are TPM and we are out. We are out. out.